Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I'm George. We're all George. So, man, what a day. What a day. We finally got what we've been hearing about for years, going all the way back to 2017. Yeah, it's been seven years in the making. We finally have spot Bitcoin ETFs. We finally got approval today. I told you guys it was going to be the 10th. I delivered. I called Gary myself and said, you need to get this done. And he, he had no choice. He had no choice. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about what to expect. And here's a surprise. What's pumping right now, in addition to Bitcoin, because of the ETF news? Let's talk about that specific coin as well. All right, let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. You know, I shared a video earlier today, um, and it was about this statement that, that got released shortly after market close, as expected. You know, I already said this, I'll say it again. This is probably the most bearish approval statement ever released by the sec <laughs> this is one of those things like uh if i had to like summarize it's like uh we had to do it i didn't really want to do it and i don't endorse what i'm doing but we did it like that's basically the summary of it <laughs> it goes on and and talks about how grayscale sued the sec won they appealed grayscale still won and because of it, he, he's like, I have no choice. I have to let spot ETFs. He doesn't call ETFs, he calls ETPs. But he's like, I have no choice but to allow ETPs to exist. But then after that paragraph, it just got more and more and more and more negative about how everything is still security and this does not endorse Bitcoin by any means. Okay, um, let, let's look at this last one here. This last paragraph. Look at this just ending paragraph right here. While we approve the listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETPs today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin. So even, even with spot ETF approvals, Gary's like, no, we will never endorse Bitcoin. Investors should remain cautious about the myriad risk associated with Bitcoin and products whose value is tied to crypto. Again, if you guys read through this, I, I linked this in my previous video. It's like the most bearish approval statement ever released. Okay, like, like literally you could tell he didn't want to do it, but he felt compelled. He had to do it. But nevertheless, we got it. We got it, and money is going to be flowing in like none other. We're talking about billions upon billions just by the end of this week. Here's the funny thing. I don't know if this is true, but it, I think it is. Supposedly, the five SEC commissioners, they voted whether they should approve or not. And it, it's, it, it was... It was really, it came down to wire, three to two. It was not like a four to one or five to oh or anything like that, three to two. And guess what? Gensler actually approved. That's a surprising thing. That could be because of my phone call or the phone call he received earlier from Larry Fink, who promised him some cushy job after this. Uh, maybe that swing the vote. You know, you make, your, you make the call. Um, but you know, that's actually quite a surprise <laughs> that he actually voted yes, rather than no. I don't know, you know, anyways, um, with approval, we got 11 spot ETFs trading soon, soon. I think it's tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Fidelity's website already lists all these symbols. You can't trade them yet, but they're all listed already. And Jan Van Eyck already said yesterday that 
it's going to be on Thursday. So, I mean, basically tomorrow we're going to get trading activated on all the exchanges. And through your brokerages, you'll be able to buy these. And even with your 401ks and, and your pension plans and retirement plans, if you're able to select what you buy, you can now buy any one of these, including HODL or GBDC or any of these hashtags or Burr from Valkyrie, right? I mean, you could buy a number of these. But if you're looking at the fees here, I mean, you figure you want to go with the lowest one. I mean, they've been outbidding each other. I would say that's bitwise, right? Bitwise is the lowest fee. Um, so that is a different differentiator. If you're wondering, well, if you're new and you're wondering, should I buy ETFs or should I buy Bitcoin? Well, the thing is, there's always going to be fees and management fees and other things when you buy ETFs versus Bitcoin. But if you buy Bitcoin, there are fees too. So I guess there's fees no matter what, no matter what. Um, but yeah, you know, Bitwise, they're trying to outdo Van Eyck because Van Eyck already announced that 5% of their profit will go to the Bitcoin developers. But Bitwise is like, no, we're going to double that. So 10% of their profits is going to fund further BDC development. And I'm hoping all these companies, including BlackRock, okay, they all donate 5 to 10% of their profit to Bitcoin development. That would be absolutely fantastic because they're obviously they're profiting from this. They're helping bring a lot of liquidity, but nevertheless, they're profiting off of Bitcoin. So why not help Bitcoin grow even more? Right. I, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so we got that. Yeah. Like I said, Fidelity's website, the ready list. If you put in the symbol, they already show up. Here's Arc B. And then here's, uh, well, no, that one I already showed. Yeah. I mean, basically. Hold all right, Van I mean, they're all they're all available. So that means trading is going to be very, very soon. Here's the thing. Here's why the title is marked urgent billions to flow into Bitcoin, because it's been reported that BlackRock already lined up two billion dollars. OK, that could come as soon as tomorrow. So. They already have billions waiting to come in. And Bloomberg predicts that on the first day alone, you'll get $4 billion. So you got BlackRock $2 billion, and then you got the rest bringing $2 billion. That's just the first day. That's $4 billion in the first day. What about Friday? And then what about the weeks afterwards, right? I mean, this is just the beginning. Billions upon billions. This is why I say billions upon billions. And then eventually it's going to lead to trillions upon trillions. By the end of 2025, when Bitcoin is at 300,000 or whatever it may be at that time, uh, it could be trillions upon trillions upon trillions. It's not, it's not unreasonable. And here's something else. If you want to hear a funny story, the irony of this, or I don't know if it's the irony, or maybe this is all planted to begin with. You know, JP Morgan and Jamie Dimon, one of the biggest naysayers of Bitcoin, okay? He did an interview not too long ago. I mean, even back in 2017 was saying this, but, you know, people thought maybe he got, he warmed up and converted. No, like just a few months ago, he went on air and said, Bitcoin has no value. Its use cases are only for bad things like sex trafficking, tax avoidance, money laundering, and terrorism, okay? Yet, JP Morgan is an authorized participant for BlackRock Spot ETF. They're one of two banks selected to be authorized participants, even though Jamie Dimon went on air just a few weeks ago or a few months ago saying how bad Bitcoin is. Again, <laughs> did he just say those things to mislead investors? I don't know why, you know, like, even I could put two and two together. Why can't the SEC put two and two together? Shouldn't the SEC be investigating Jamie Dimon and Jamie Morgan for statements like that? Like, it's okay if you're bearish and you, you don't like Bitcoin. But then, isn't it funny that months later, now they're an authorized participant and they start buying spotted ETFs? That seems like market manipulation, right? Like, so why is Jamie Dimon never looked at? 
I'll tell you why. Because he's the CEO of J.P. Morgan, and J.P. Morgan can't be touched. That's why. J.P. Morgan gets caught for money laundering all the time. They throw a few billion, and the problem goes away. Jamie Nyman never gets in trouble. J.P. Morgan gets caught for manipulating silver for years. That's like a pretty serious crime. Does anyone go to jail? Does Jamie Dimon get fired? No, they pay a few billions and the problem goes away, right? Like, is SEC really, is Gary really investigating everyone? Or there's a certain group that he can investigate and a certain group that he cannot touch, like Jamie Dimon. So, yeah. Anyways, now that we got spot ETFs, this is what's going to look like. This is what happened to gold after like being out for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, it was just pretty much flat. Okay, here's a better picture. Uh, yeah, so it, basically it was flat for like 100 years. Then it had a little momentum. And then after ETFs, then it had true momentum. And then it started skyrocketing. Okay, so if we're comparing gold to Bitcoin or Bitcoin to gold, seeing it's the, the most closest, I guess, comparison because Bitcoin is seen as digital gold, right? Um, so what's coming could, could mimic this, right? Just like upward trajectory to, to the moon. So that could be right around the corner. And let's not forget what's also right around the corner in three months we have the halving event. The halving event is significant. I know we've been talking about SPY ETS for a long time, right? But I think that has overshadowed this other major event, which is significantly more important if you think about it. The inflation rate being cut in half, it makes it harder for miners to mine Bitcoin. It makes the supply smaller, basically. Um, so, I mean, that's just as significant. And every time you have a halving event, what happens afterwards, Bitcoin starts skyrocketing. And that is just in three months. So from here on out, from here to the halving event, who knows? With so much money or billions flowing in, I mean, who knows where Bitcoin will be by halving or by the end of the year. I mean, Tom Lee from Fundstrat, who was one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls out there. Now he's turning bullish once again. He says Bitcoin could hit $150,000 in the next 12 months and half a million dollars in five years. So 12 months from here, that means the beginning of 2025. That means by the end of this year, he's thinking we're going to hit 150000 That's even more bullish than my prediction. I said we'll probably be at 70000 mid-year and maybe end the year around a hundred thousand he's saying no 150,000 by the end of the year or the beginning of next year and then we rally from 150,000 to 500,000 towards the next having event right or at the next having event i should say uh that's pretty bullish that's pretty bullish that's even more bullish than me and why does he think so it's because of ets because it just opens up it just opens up uh, a way for so much money out there to come into the space that normally they can't come into the space because they just can't hold physical Bitcoin. Now they can, right? We're talking about like the biggest funds out there. They can dedicate a portion of their portfolio now to just spot Bitcoin ETFs. They can never dedicate a portion to Bitcoin whether it's tax reasons, accounting reasons, or regulations or whatever, but now they could dedicate up to 10% for Bitcoin spy ETFs. It's just huge. All these funds are like billions, tens of billions. Some of them are hundreds of billions. They're just huge. I mean, we're just talking about a, a, a boatload of money that's ready to come in. Okay. And because of the approval today, not only did Bitcoin do well, a lot of things, a lot of crypto did well today. We had a good recovery, especially with alts. I know a lot of you guys were kind of like down, like, oh, alts sold off. And, you know, is Bitcoin dominance going to continue to rise? Well, you know, today actually surprised a whole bunch of people. A lot of alts went up. 
Okay, including one in particular, Ethereum woke up. Ethereum went up 10%. 10%. And this may be the start of something. Okay, why? Because what's next is Ethereum spot ETFs. That could be around the corner. I don't think it's that soon, but the possibility of a Ethereum spot ETF or multiple spot ETFs later this year is definitely a real possibility because people didn't believe that Gary would ever approve Bitcoin spot ETFs. There are still some in the chat that still didn't believe that was going to happen today, right? Like you guys know who you are. I saw the comments. People just did not believe, and it's like a, it's almost like a miracle, right? It's like a, you know, coming to Jesus moment. Um, and because of that, now a lot of people think, oh, there's a real possibility that Ethereum gets ETFs too, right? I think that's why Ethereum started going up. Got to pay attention. It's been so weak against Bitcoin, but now today is kind of like the first day. Yesterday and today, kind of two days that I really actually picked up. Is this going to continue? We'll see. But it's not just Ethereum. You got Cardano up 12%, Avalanche up 12%, Polkadot up 14%. Polygon up 12%, right? You got a lot of big mover. Ethereum Classic up 35% because, again, Ethereum ETF news somehow is pumping into people to buy Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is not getting an ETF. Uh, but you got Arbitrum up 25%, Mutable. You know, the thing is, a lot of these are, are up because they just went down so much over the weekend. Now they're just getting back to their previous level, which is good. Overall market cap is at a recent high of 1.77 trillion. And we're going to see that climb up here on out. Honestly, I think with the billions that's about to flow in tomorrow and the rest remaining this week and the remaining this year, it's going to be, I mean, it's just going to be really bullish. I mean, in my opinion, it's just going to be super, super bullish. I don't know how else to say it. You know, that, that buy the news, sell the, sell, no, buy the rumor, sell the news. That a lot of people thought it was going to happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Right? It's kind of what I expected. Now, it's early. It could happen tomorrow. It can happen when ETFs open. I just don't think so because everyone's trying to wait to see how much money is going to flow in. Right? If you have billions flowing in immediately, and then you have tens of billions flowing in within a month, and then hundreds of billions flowing in within the next three months, like, you really can't be bearish and you really can't sell off Bitcoin. That would be stupid to do so. We'll see. We'll see. But right now, Bitcoin is holding steady. Now, here's the other thing you may be wondering. Why is why is it not pumping? Why is it not at 50,000 like I said? Well, again, it's early. Tomorrow, let's see. When the market opens, what's going to happen? I think everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen. Tomorrow, we can certainly see that 50,000. Right today we had a little bit, a couple times where we shot up over forty-seven thousand. Right now we're hovering a little bit below. I think I think everyone's just kind of anxious to see what's going to happen tomorrow. But like again, I think great things are going to happen. Short term, you know, if there was going to be buy the rumor, sell the news, I think it would have happened already. In fact, I think you know during these events it already happened. And there's just not enough money to drive Bitcoin down any further. Unless you have this massive whale that decides to unload enormous amount of Bitcoin. But it's just not happening. Anyways. All right. Sock, I don't think I'm going to get into huge. But there's another one that I am eyeing mm -hmm. on Polygon. So I may be getting into that. But um, Citizen Crypto. My concern is the ETF will manipulate the market to keep the cost low so they could buy it up, squeeze out retail. Your thoughts? It could certainly happen, but that's probably down the road. Right now, mm -hmm. kind of like gold. A lot of people complain that gold has been held down by wall street right but look at how many years it went upwards before that happened maybe if bitcoin eventually reaches five hundred thousand or a million then that kind of stuff happens but right now there's just so much 
So much money flowing in. Yeah. Uh, Citizen Crypto also upgraded. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, I, I caught up. Uh, you know, someone just reminded me that it's also DCA night. Let me pull it up here. Today's it actually it's good and it's bad because it was down and it would have been good to DCA while the market was down, but it doesn't look as impressive. So I'm gonna pull it up. I bet because of the big recovery, now we're back in full force here. Um, it's loading. It's taking a long time to load here. Come on. Come on. It's still trying to load. I don't know what. Too many people are checking their portfolio. All right, here it is. So overall, portfolios to twenty-two thousand, up thirty-one percent. That's about that's about the the peak. I think it maybe a little bit lower a few weeks ago, a little bit higher a few weeks ago, right? But overall, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. DCAing long term over a couple of years, it's looking good. And, and you know what looks good is they finally fixed this. This, this was getting cut off. Um, now I can actually see all time on the side here. Now you got a lot of green, but there are still a lot of reds. For example, Cardano all time is still down seven, and Polygon 12, and VeChain 9. But a lot of these others have now turned green. Even XRP is in green. Cosmos still down. Phantom is still down. I mean, look at my beam. Uh, I don't think it went up 843% since I bought it, but that would be crazy if it did. Um, yeah, I don't think that. I think there's something wrong there, but I did buy beam recently and it's been up. Maybe it did. I put, did I put $30? I think I only put $33 in there and it went to $310. Is that right? That would be absolutely crazy. I don't think that happened. But anyways, there's still a lot in red. Um, and I don't know if they're going to catch up. Celestio's a recent ad. They're up. Um, snack. I added Snack. It's up 140% since I added. Helium is up. I mean, there's a lot of good movers here. A lot of good movers. Um, okay, so in terms of DCA, what would I need to DCA into? Well, obviously, I think I should DCA into this, the ones that are still low. Um, that are still in the red all time. Even Arbitrum up 24% today. Now I'm up 82% all time. Um, guys, I mean, anyone could do this. The reason why I show this is anyone could do it. I'm not, I'm not checking the charts right now. I'm not saying, oh, okay, this is a good entry point for, I don't know, VeChain, for example, right? I just stick with what I like and what's down, you know, and, and just DCA long term. Uh, Nier is still down. Polkadot is down. Cadena is really down. Sh uh, these are all down. Um, do I want to add to any of those? Say, Celestia. I mean, Say is down since I added it. Cock is down. Maybe I should add some cock. Uh, I, I only put a little amount in there. No, you know what? I think I need to stick to the... Stick to the... The... the, the the, the big ones, the big caps. I think Cardano, Polygon, VeChain, I think these three, they're still down, so why not? I'm just going to add it to these three here. can never go wrong with going with a big cap. When you can't decide, go with a big cap. Cardano has been so-so. Uh, it hasn't been that stagnant, but it hasn't been that stellar either. Uh, I'll add 57 yeah, it's 57 exactly. Where's Injective on here? I feel like I'm underweight on Injective. Injective, I'm up 203%. I'm still surprised by this. Am I really up 842% on Beam? Maybe I am. That would be crazy. Um, all right, and then let's add some Polygon here. All right, 36.327, and then let's add some V-Chain. 
or this could save. Man, there must be a lot of people using this right now because it's not is it's not very responsive. All right, and then let's add yeah, V chain here. Come on. $33 divided by 0 0.0323. All right. So this week I added three of my, uh, three of my coins that are still red all time. VeChain, Polygon, Cardano. And those three are fantastic projects. They're all L1s. Polygon's a L1, L2, but uh, all fantastic. Bitcoin up 72%. Solana up 247%. Ethereum is even up 37%. Avalanche up 69%. Arbitrum, like I said, 83%. These are all fantastic gainers. Even Stacks. You know, I've been talking a lot about Stacks. 105% right here. Injective 204%. Just through DCA. Just DCA, DCA, and DCA more. And that's what, that's what you get. Uh, MMZ... MMZ says uh, 73k and 40. Uh, I, that that would that would be a little nutty if that happened. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's that's just too fast there. Um, all right, what else did I miss? CPI. Noah says CPI tomorrow. Imagine if it's good. On top of everything else, yeah, yeah, I would love that. Love to see the the general economy, macro environment get better, right? I talk about rate cuts. I think rate cuts are going to come too right after having an event. So we got three months until having, and then probably three more months. Probably in July is when we're going to get rate cuts. So that's another catalyst. Pablo says Kimball released today that they're releasing their own subnet using Kimball as gas. Thoughts? I have no thoughts, man. It's a meme. I'm not going to give it too much thoughts. <laughs> Pablo, I, uh, I salute your, your willingness to show Kimball every single stream. <laughs> Uh, did you hear about HBAR and Algo collaboration that could help HBAR? I did not hear that. I did not hear that. Um, I think that helps HBAR more than it helps Algorand. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Gary's go prove cock. <laughs> um, tomorrow's could be a big day for BDC or nothing burger. I mean, it could be a nothing burger, but right now it's clear that the momentum is back, not just for Bitcoin, but for an entire crypto market cap. That's fantastic, right? Bitcoin leads the way, and then what happens? Everything else comes up too and that's what i want to see i know most of you guys are not just bitcoin maxis a lot of you guys are diversified you have a lot of other alts it's good to see everything come up back up at least but there's still long way to go that's the beauty that's the beauty a lot of these still have to go up two three four five six seven x to get back to their previous high and then imagine after hitting that how much more they're going to go in 2025. Johnny, you just missed it. I DCA'd into the three big ones uh, that was still underperforming. Polygon, VeChain, and Cardano. Uh, can you give us a 100x token besides cock in you? I mean, there's a lot of others. Um, I don't know if they're hundred X's. I mean, they could be, I don't know. 
Um, I don't talk about weight a lot, but weight has gone and become an incubator and they're still very small market cap. That could be a hundred X. Uh, there's another one called bonsai seed. Uh, they could do a one hundred X because they're really small and they help token creations. Uh, another one is amino amino rewards. It's a fitness shopping app. Um, they're relatively small. They could be a hundred X. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that could be a hundred X. There's a lot of, they're still very early. There's no guarantees, but yeah, even like something like DeFi kingdoms or wag me games. I mean, they're both relatively small. Can they do a hundred X in a bull run? Yes. Uh, Lazaro, January 15 or 17, Coinbase goes to court with SEC. You know Coinbase is going to win, right? SEC has no, nothing on Coinbase. Nothing. So Coinbase go win, and that's going to be a big thing. Could you look at, is it Dion Protocol? One of the guys on the team is from Phantom. They're currently on ETH, but their mainnet is launching soon. You know, the only guy from Phantom that I care about and know is Andre Crony. So if he's not the one that started this, then it's not very interesting to me. Okay. Powering the crypto revolution with clean energy. What does that mean? Building a sustainable future with eco-friendly, innovative blockchain. To all, all proof of stake chains could be considered eco-friendly. So what does that mean? All right, what, you know, not that I have anything against green energy, but when I see like stuff like it's solar or green energy or whatever this is, and everything is about green energy or solar, um, I, I say no. Shortfall, stop trying to shill Litecoin. Uh, George, what are your thoughts on liquidity? That's one that I don't have any thoughts on. Um, okay, so they're uh, their liquidity provider, loan provider. They have their own stable coin, LUSD. Yeah. Unstoppable stablecoin. I'm just gonna say no. Uh, stablecoin issuers do not interest me. Bit is legit. Props to swaps. Respect to Snack. I don't know the first part that you're trying to. Is that code for something? But Snack came back today. Uh, been a minute to ask any Cybertruck news delivery. No, nothing. I got a really bad trading off for my Model X, so that kind of pissed me off. It almost makes me want to cancel my Cybertruck order, which I can't because the $1,000 deposit is non-refundable. Um, yeah, I spent $150,000, that includes FSD, on a Model X Plaid a year and a half ago. So it's a 2022 model. Um, and I know they recently like adjusted the price down on Model Xs, so now you could get it like for like 130 or something or 120 all in. So that of course immediately drops the price. And then I asked Tesla for a trade and offer and they gave me like $72,000. Like it has like 5,000 miles. It's a 2022, 5,000 miles, everything's perfect. And I lost like half the value. So Tesla's really suck. When it comes to resale value, they're like phones. Like you don't want to hold on to them. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna look at Giga Chad. Uh, he says, "How scared was Gary when he saw my number on his caller ID?" I don't, I don't know. He tried to play it cool. You know, I'm like, "Yo, Gary, what's going on?" Uh, you know I'm old because I, I do this when I'm trying to imitate a phone call. Um, and he's like, hey, George, 
don't worry. I know why you're calling. It's it's getting done. It's getting done. He seemed like he seemed like it was busy. Uh, Sam auction up thirty four percent today. Second highest mover on Coinbase. Is it called auction? Bounce. Sorry, you have been blocked. Well, then that means I can't see it. Uh, the bull run has potential. It's been so fun. Yep, that's true. I'm surprised China's not buying. You know, this cycle is led by North America. Previous cycles, China kind of led. But this cycle seems like U.S. is leading because of, I think, spot ETFs. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think China has been buying or Asia has been buying nearly as much as America. Josh, thank you for that. Do you think when Ethereum gets ETFs, the ERC-20 tokens will pump with it? I think a lot of it started to do so. Uh, liquid staking providers like uh, like uh, Ludo, they pumped up a ton yesterday. Rocket Pool also went up a ton i think yeah you're i think you're on to something like the memes and everything and dexes that relate to ethereum or on top of ethereum they will do well but i think we have to wait a bit before we get ethereum spot etfs crypto creme cheers to you and a great community here on this historic day got a nice bottle of scotch to celebrate watching the stream with my girl shout out to Javona, Givana, I think it's Givana, that sounds pretty sexy, well, thank you for that, and you guys have a good time watching me, uh, ANLS is about to, to scent, is that how the, the kids say it now, scent? Why don't we get the same amount of FOMO today? Because I think too many people are waiting to see what happens tomorrow. I think people are still on the fence, like whether or not there's going to be a sell moment tomorrow. I mean, we already had sell moments already this week. I, I just, you know, like we had, there's plenty of opportunities, but we'll see. I think there's a lot of hesitation about what's going to come out tomorrow. Bonk went up. Someone said Bonk has an earn program or something like that. Uh, Bonk didn't go up, but they're closing in at $1 billion again. You know, just a week ago, was it just a week ago? Yeah, right here. I mean, they were, market cap got to 640 I mean, that's a pretty good pump from there. That was only three days ago. I'm sorry, it wasn't a week ago. It was only three days ago that Bonk fell to 628 million market cap. Now it's at 900 something. So that's a good 50% rise in three days. Uh. Do you have any thoughts about Celebi upgrade to EVM layer two this year? I saw they're in the top 10 daily active users for chains. Somehow I don't believe that. Yeah, and second of all, um, they're just jumping on a bandwagon because everyone else is doing it. I don't think that's going to help them. They're in a sea of layer twos. So yeah, I don't know if that's gonna help them. I thought they were, I thought they had a good relation with Cardano, what happened there? <laughs> Do you think Project like Uniswap could reach all time high again? Yeah. Yup. Uh, there are 4 billion. Where were they? They were close to 45. So 7, 6x, 7x, 7x. They could reach that end of this year. They could reach that end of this year. 
I think almost everything could do a 10x this year. They could. Doesn't mean that they will. But there's potential. There's going to be enough money flowing in that 10x for most of these will not be difficult. That pump and dump effed everything, don't you think? Well, it certainly effed me up with my leverage plays. So, like, you know, like going into this this last weekend, I was feeling good. I was locked and loaded. I got a lot. I had a lot of longs in the green. And then, boom, this killed me. Then, boom, this killed me. And even today, a lot of this killed me, man. Like I said, if you play with leverage, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to be careful. Uh, with volatility, you get wiped out real fast, real fast. So I agree with you. Uh, when will there be a Cardano ETF? Never. I don't think there'll ever be a Cardano ETF. Eventually, I think what's going to happen is these ETFs will have a bucket of crypto within the ETF. So I think at that time, you could have like, you know, a L1 ETF. So you'll have Cardano and Solana and Polygon and Avalanche in the bucket, right? But the SEC has to declare all of them non-securities first in order for that to happen. Yeah, it's like an index fund. Exactly. It'll be an index fund of all the big crypto out there. And it could be even an index fund for a small cap crypto where it's just like all everything that's under, you know, 200 million, for example. It, it could happen. I think within the next 10 years, you're going to see a lot more funds based on crypto. Um, mass adoption is going to happen. After this ETF for Bitcoin, um, we're talking about true mass adoption. I mean, there's still so many people every day I talk to. I ask them about Bitcoin. They really don't know anything about it. Those of us in the game, we think everyone knows about Bitcoin. Everyone knows about Cardano or Solana. That's Far, far from the truth. In reality, very, very, very little people out there know about Bitcoin. But the introduction of Bitcoin ETFs is, is going to change that because now people will get more exposed to it, be able to get into it. And, and um, it's just going to open up. It's just going to open up a lot of liquidity, in my opinion. Ethereal. Great. Shady look. I think it's true. Um, time? No, I don't like Wonderland. Time to break out the blue label. You know what? When Bitcoin hits 50k, which should be soon, maybe even tomorrow, I'll bust out the blue label. But not in the morning. It's too early for that. If it's like nighttime when we hit break 50, I'll bust out the blue label. All right, guys, I think that's uh, enough fun for today. We got what we wanted. We got what I promised, a Bitcoin ETF. In fact, we didn't get one. We got 11 of them. Okay, Gary didn't want to give it to us. This whole shenanigans yesterday wiped a lot of people out. Okay, um, I don't know who's going to investigate SEC. I don't know who's going to investigate Gary, but I felt like he was compelled <laughs> to do this. And he didn't really want to do it. But regardless, we got it. We got what we want. So tomorrow's going to be a big day. So make sure you wake up early. Tune into my stream 830. And then we'll see. We'll see what happens. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. We could have $4 billion flow into ETFs tomorrow alone. But it could be way more than that. So... Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Have a good one. Take care.